folks. Welcome to another episode of Real Business Roundtable. I'm Andy Galashahi, and this is Jake Savage. We're yes, here to sir. educate you, entertain you, inspire you when it comes to business, All sales, marketing, lifestyle. Today, we're going to talk about how to grow your business. Just little tips and tricks, things you can do if you have a business or you're thinking about starting a business, things that you can do to grow your business. Uh, Jake. So to first start off this uh, conversation, just wanted to kind of ask you, you know, based on your experiences, growing businesses and stuff like that, what do you think the first and foremost thing is that drives growth, especially with people that we work with? What do you think first and foremost is the thing that drives the most growth in the shortest amount of time? Like what's the most effective thing in your own opinion? I mean, there's so many different aspects on growing a business. I guess it all depends on where you're at in the business. Let's say you're at the beginning, you know, you're just, you're just starting, you're trying to sell the product that you have, yeah. or you're in the middle, you know, you've been stagnant for a little bit. I mean, there's so many different ways, but I mean, taking advantage of, of digital media, you know, Absolutely. running advertisements. I yeah, mean, yeah. this is not, a, this is not, you know, we're, we're not, not trying we're to not, We're not being salesy. But no, we, no. But I mean, seriously <laughs> though, I mean, I think people understand that, especially with the boom of like, you know, drop shipping, e-commerce businesses, this, that, this and that, you know, it, it, what runs those, the vehicle for those, you know, for that success, the success of that type of company is advertising. Yep. And I mean, you know, getting, it can mean the success of any kind. Getting your name out there is the yeah. fastest way to grow your business. Being unknown is the fastest way to failure, obscurity, whatever you want to call it. It's not going to work out. Yes, you can do word of mouth advertising, which is very old school. And it's the foundation of any business. No one chooses to do word of mouth advertising. A lot of people like to brag about that. Yeah, yeah, do word of mouth. Yeah, that's just basically you saying I don't do anything. But see, the thing is these days, you know, sometimes there's, there's situations where people just started off and they don't have any money for advertising. Sure. What I say for them mm -hmm. is there are so many different things you can do. You know, um, you know, content is king straight up. I've heard many people say this before. And, yeah. it, you know, as long as you know how to do it right, which today... The social platforms that we have access to today, for example, TikTok, I mean, the amount of growth that people are seeing just from posting a ton of videos using the right strategy, which, you know, we'll, I'm, I'm open to giving away a couple different things that people may not know about in order to drive organic traffic on TikTok and, you know, be, you know, create kind of a trend around your product or service. I've mm -hmm. helped a couple people do it and it's worked out really well. Um, but you have no excuse in today's world. The social platforms that we have access to and the amount of engagement and traffic that we have access to at the tip of our fingertips yeah. is insane. You have no excuse. Yeah. So back, yeah, back at what I was talking about when, when the different types of advertising, advertising is the first main way that anybody can grow their business. The word of mouth advertising, as long as you produce a good product or you sell a good service, it will naturally spread yes. word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, but word of mouth is not necessarily a proactive grab the bull by the horns approach when it comes to growing a business. It's no. just going to happen naturally. Yeah. yeah. You'll think you're, you're saving yourself some cash by not advertising, but ultimately your growth is going to go at a snail's pace. At the guaranteed. same, at the same time, if you start a business and you know, uh, you're, you're looking to not spend any money in the growth of your company, you shouldn't have started that company. Exactly. You have to take risks. There's risks to starting companies. There's risks to starting businesses. I mean, you have to invest your money. There's, yeah. there's different, you know, formulations and what percentage to spend and stuff like that. Yeah, but the, yeah. you have to be prepared to spend money in order to grow. Spend money to make money. Exactly. The way it's broken down, real simple for people at home that are watching, the way it's broken down is when you have a sole proprietorship, you do a really good job. Say you're some kind of craftsman or something like that. And you say, yeah, I built my business on word of mouth. Well, you're, you're going to hit a cap. And in your mind, you're thinking, hey, I don't have, or have to advertise. I'm getting away with spending this money. When ultimately, if you expanded your team, your labor force, or however you deliver your product or service, if you expand that ability to handle more business that can handle the increase in demand from the advertising, now you can actually grow your business so growing isn't always just, hey, I'm going to hit, hit my capacity and I'm going to say I'm really doing well. If you want to break through that plateau, which almost every business hits, 
everybody has their plateau, mm -hmm. even in fitness, you know, everything has a plateau to break through that plateau. You have to do something different, different. aside from yep. word of mouth advertising. And we say that a lot, you know, it, it's, you know, we say that a lot, do it different, but really, I mean, it is, it's how you separate yourself from the masses. All of these markets that we're talking about are, are so saturated. For example, real estate, it is extremely saturated, but when you do stuff different, when you, you know, when you, you know, point out to people, you know, it, it what? generates growth. It promotes yeah, growth. What frustrates me with me with real estate and there are a few really good real estate platforms out there. Yeah. What frustrates me with real estate is the mindset and the stress that the agents are under, like they don't know where their next sale is coming from and they're very gun shy to advertise. And what frustrates me is the people that they're selling for, don't really, it's almost like a you're on your own mentality. And some of them don't have the cash to properly market themselves, but it's going to ultimately benefit the brokerage, which yeah. there's a disconnect there. You know, why not support your agents, you know, in the highest way possible. And mm -hmm. you know, that's going to help everybody in the long run. Mm -hmm. But it, when you're a real estate agent, it's basically your own business. You know, you got that inventory, hopefully there's inventory there, <laughs> but you got that inventory, you got to move it. Yeah. That's how you make money is you move inventory. Mm -hmm. No, especially for, I mean, that industry, it's, it's, you know, I just want to go back to like spending money on advertising is very, very important, but mm -hmm. you got it. Like people have to take it. I see people all the, all the time, not taking advantage of what's right there. I mean, you could literally get, you know, like we're doing right now, mm. we take, you know, a video of us doing a podcast and then we break it up into six different parts you know, 10 to 20 second clips, take all those posted on every single platform, 10 videos, just, you know, in a week mm -hmm. on, you know, five different platforms and you're going to get traffic. You're going to get some sort of engagement. You're going to get your name out there. It's consistency. It's consistency. Exactly. Stay on it. So like, you know, I know we were talking about doing one episode every week and I'm thinking maybe we should be doing two. Yeah. We talked about this before the podcast, you know, we're still trying to figure out you know, we're so early in this right now. We're trying to figure out what day to post on, you know, figure out the right platforms and, you know, yeah, the, how many episodes a week. I think we started yeah. at one, but I, I kind of like the idea of doing two. But I'm thinking in my head, like, OK, YouTube channels that I follow and I go in, I check. I like the ones that make all it's crazy, but the ones that make almost daily posts. Well, so but those are guys who have the time to yeah, do yeah, it, the yeah, money yeah. to do I it. Like I know I would, busy. I would 100%, but yeah, I cannot yeah, yeah. fucking do that. I get it. I get it. But that's why I want to try to do two. Yeah, no, I, I mean, take the, yeah. take the most out of Fridays, which is it's Friday today when we're shooting. Yeah. I honestly, I'd like to hear from, from the people watching, what days do you recommend we drop on? You know, I was thinking Friday morning, maybe one during the week, you know, one at the end of the week. Yeah, month. leave a so comment. I, leave I'm, a I'm comment. curious. You know, I'm going to, you know, once we start posting, I'm going to check out analytics and find out what's the best time to yeah. post something. But I'd like to know. I mean, what, what time do you think? Yeah, that'd so, be great. That'd be great to know that. Back to yeah, growing a business. Yeah, so advertising. So there's different forms of advertising. You have traditional media. You got your radio. You got your TV. Mm -hmm. You got billboards. You got print. That's more traditional uh, in my professional opinion, in today's world, you only want to dabble in traditional if your digital is kicking butt. Like you're you're killing it at digital. Social's killing it. Search is killing it. You know, you're you're retargeting. Everything is rolling. Facebook ads, Instagram, Google Display. Basically, your whole digital landscape is performing at the highest level possible. At that point, then you invest in traditional media because right now, in you know, right now in today's world, that's those traditional. Uh, media outlets, in my opinion, again, is there, it is considered like a luxury. You only jump into that, that arena when everything else digitally is, is on point. Um, but there's so many different ways to, you know, to market your company, even off of digital, there's hundreds of ways you can do it. You just got to be clever with it. Yeah, you can join different Facebook groups and that's free and you have to, if you if they're okay with it, if the moderators are okay with it, you can just share information and then just naturally people will look into who you are and they might say, oh yeah, hey, I need this, I need that, or I need help with this. You could also take part in events. Networking is massive for, for growth in a company. Networking, networking is huge, but me personally, I'm going to keep it real. Um... A lot of networking events I go to is a lot of bullshit. Uh, a lot of people that are, you know, they 
I don't know. It's I, my experience with networking events, not networking. Yeah. So okay. I, events. Dude, I've yes, networked. Okay. I was going to say. I, I've networked at 7 Eleven, the convenience store. I've uh-huh. pulled up, ca- carried a conversation with someone, come to find out. I, the guy's a business owner, owns three different companies. Bang. I got his business card. Boom. I'm doing something with him. Like that kind of networking, natural networking, I'm really good at. But yeah. like networking events where you go out and people have their little cocktails and it's just, 98% of it's a lot of just fluff. It depends on what industry you're in as well. Yeah, I've in had a lot been, of industries had, you can find a lot I, of value in it, I've but had bad experiences with that. No, I'm and like, I see what you're saying. I do. Just, I do. I see it's what you're just saying. people are not in my experience the networking events I've been to people just not genuine. Like they're yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, they'll yes you to death." And it's like and then like come to find out like you know, they're just not being as genuine as... Actually, I'll tell you this right now. I get the most reception, believe it or not, by going to presenters at networking events. So the booths. Well, I get a lot more receptiveness and they're talking to me and they're actually engaged and they're not trying to sell me anything. They're like, oh, okay, let me pass your info. This is actually interesting. And they're like taking down my info, asking me questions. Mm-hmm. They didn't say a word about trying to sell me anything at the, at the, at the booth. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, maybe this person has a connection. But yeah, it's give or take with networking. I think it, yeah, I was Net- say, networking's okay. important, but you just got to be careful when you're at networking events. Make sure that the time that you are spending networking and talking, that it's providing value yes building yeah. real relationships yeah like they're being genuine with you you know i've i've personally met a couple people while i mean networking but we're talking about events specifically i've personally met you know i haven't done too much success out of it but i've met some people who have led to you know other accounts yeah. and other You've opportunities and, everybody's you know, different yeah exactly that's what i'm saying everyone is different um networking though one of the i mean it's one of the most powerful things you could you could possibly have is get yourself out there, meet people, talk to people, create relationships. Yep. Networking is extremely powerful. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, another thing that is important if you want to grow your business is standing out. Now, what do I mean by that? <laughs> we I mean, say this a lot. Doing it different. <laughs> doing it, doing it different. Looking different. Making sure your customers' experience is good. Makes them feel warm and fuzzy. Yeah, you don't want to be commoditized. Yeah, commoditization is the death of any business. It is a very, very important thing to keep in mind. Whether you're just coming up with a business idea or you have an existing business, you know how you can discover real easily if you are a commodity? Are people competing on price? Are your competitors competing on price? Joe's Pizza, you know, John's Pizza, you guys are both pizza shops. What makes you different? That's the key right there. Being different, being unique, standing out, providing the most value, not doing the undesirable things that your competitors are doing. Yeah. See, what happens, I mentioned this on another episode, was people follow a playbook and they think an industry needs to work a certain way. And, you know, the business world has shown time and time again, the people who go off the beaten path, the people who don't copy are the ones that are usually suddenly successful. Oh, yeah. they're really different. Mm-hmm. Um, there's several business books out there about, you know, we call it decommoditization. Uh, there's one called The Blue Ocean Strategy, which I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. Um, that, really, that really opened up my mind to uh, what commoditization is. That's the technical business term, but The Blue Ocean Strategy is kind of, in my opinion, it's kind of a spinoff of that. Um, but basically just providing the highest level of value for your customers, not copying your competition, because that's mm-hmm. just going to make you, you think about it, you're, you're, if you're going to be a, a carbon copy of your competitor, what makes you different? Oh, wait, price. price. Yep. Well, okay, now you're going to lower your price. This guy's going to lower his price. It's going to be a price war. It's a bloodbath. It's a terrible situation. You don't want to be like gasoline. Yeah, you just, it's a bad situation and you want to just kind of separate yourself, stand out. Now, what makes you stand out? Let's break, break down some of that. Okay. The experience that your customers have, Reviews. whether it's, whether it's on, on, the, on the phone, on a phone call with one of your team members, or it's the onboarding process or how you respond to emails, um, little things like What's that. What your web, web presence looks like. Yeah, so the, you want to make sure that the customer's experience, when they're on your website, they're going through your website, you want to make sure that it's a good one, that mm-hmm. it's easy to navigate, they're not getting frustrated because 
all the little things. If you look at some of the biggest brands in the world, they care about customer experience. Mm -hmm. That feeling that someone feels is going to impact things, impact things in a in a positive or negative way. For big companies like that, I've heard on multiple occasions they're you know they're not selling the product, they're selling the customer service mm -hmm. because it's extremely important. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like dealing with like a bank or something like that. I can't stand a bank that's it's hard to get them on the phone. We got the camera guy shaking his head because he probably agrees. Yeah. So yeah, the, you know, you know, banks and stuff like that, or other customer service. Uh, driven businesses, it's very important to kind of maintain that level of that good feeling. I'll, I, if someone has good customer service, I will stick with them. Even if like they screw up or something happens, I'll be like, you know what? They take care of me. I'll, I'm going to stick around. Great branding as well. Mm -hmm. Really good branding it goes a long way, obviously. Yeah, and another thing for the audience to understand is branding is more than just a logo. Yeah. The branding is the overall experience, mm -hmm. the feelings associated with when you are, when you are experiencing an impression from that brand, the color palette, what's going on again, the emotions it might trigger. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a lot that goes into branding, you know, um, for example, are you associating your brand with success? So you're associating your brand with freedom or vacations or, relaxing or your or beauty or whatever it might be you want to make sure that your brand is in line with whatever visuals that you're using in your media yeah 100 percent. i yeah. see that sometimes where people kind of go off they really go off in a weird direction and sometimes it throws off yeah it's funny these days like i j for some reason this conversation reminds me of like uh you know, big companies are doing some some really interesting stuff like on on Twitter. You you must have seen like McDonald's and Burger King in a in like a like a you know like argument on Twitter, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like I actually noticed recently Lotus, you know, the car company, mm -hmm. they go on TikTok and they start posting really funny videos and it has brought them so much attraction. And just like there's so many different things that you can do. You just got like for example, you know, Go on TikTok and go to Lotus's page and just watch their videos. It doesn't give you any information. It just, it's literally just a funny video and then a video of their cars. And they have gotten so much traction. Yeah, they're, doing something, they're doing something different. Different. And it's funny. And, it, and it, you know, it, it pleases people when they watch it. It's just, it, it's, I, I love seeing it. I love seeing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The next item that is very important to keep in mind if you want to grow a business this is the lifeblood of a business sales sales we talked about it last episode sales are the lifeblood of a business a mm -hmm. business needs sales to pay for its overhead to invest in growth that's what a company needs mm -hmm. if you have a couple you know i've seen this in our industry where you know an agency gets a couple big clients I kind of look at this, I can give you an analogy where you have this big bucket of water balanced on five toothpicks. Um, let's say you have five massive accounts. Your risk, your risk factor there is at the highest level possible. If you, I'm talking about, you know, uh, businesses that have, let's say that more than 20% of their revenue comes from one client. That's, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. But then there are Very people dangerous. who have higher numbers than that. I've seen agencies that have five clients and they have 50 employees, 60 employees, pure insanity. And then boom, layoffs. Mm -hmm. So like what I recommend is constantly driving the sales in a, in a company, regardless of the size of the account, never sit back and get relaxed. You should always proactively move to the next stage, move to the next step. Never, never hit a point where you're like, oh, we don't need to sell anything. Okay. So considering you're a successful business owner for the past, however long you've been in 15 business years, for 15 years, but you've owned businesses before that. How do, so what comes with growth? Changes and adaptation within the company. Great question. What comes with growth to set some expectations yeah. is you know, uh, based on the size of your company. So if you're a sole proprietor, yeah, you just got to get some taxes done. You got to file some paperwork with the state. You got to set up a bank Make account. Make sure you pay your taxes. But once you actually start getting employees, place of business, if you have over 15, there's certain OSHA laws you got to follow, 
things like that, where things get a little bit more complicated. It's not overwhelming. You should be in business with a partner that can help you with that stuff. If you don't, if you're not familiar with it, or if you're doing it yourself, you need to learn this stuff. So the, the bigger you get, um, there's also like more paperwork, mm-hmm. insurance, oh, so much stuff and hiring too. I mean, you know, one thing that I know when you're growing a company is don't be afraid to hire for help. You know, like you said, for taxes and this and that and all this paperwork and stuff like that. There's professionals in that area. Yeah. Don't take it on all yourself. Yeah. A- invest in your company. Invest in people working with you for your company. You need to hire some kind of team. So every business is every business is different. Some people believe in having an in-house team. Yes, there are benefits. You can control those people. Yeah, but um, you should have those people that you're hiring, focusing on one, two, or three things maybe, but when you hire a team, just you can obviously you can outsource some of your work, but you should have some kind of in-house team so you have, you know, control. But there there's a balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people want to build an entirely you know in-house team, and yeah, that's great and sounds good, but that's extremely expensive. It can be. It's extremely expensive. You know, and there's and there's good things about it too. It depends. Yeah. I all, I always say like, it depends on the size of your company. Yeah. If you're trying to grow it to this massive, you know, massive company, then you should have an in-house team as well as agencies. Well, well, well for example, if there's an advertising agency that someone's going to work with, I recommend that the the business, as long as it makes sense for them, they should have one person, one person on staff that oversees the the advertising the marketing and stuff like that yeah that's good oversee it but make sure when you're hiring them they're a creative genius they you know they know what they're talking about because that's yeah. it and they got to have the same or similar passion as oh yeah the owner you know you got to find someone that's in it like they really like want to be you know part of what you're trying to build and that sometimes that's hard to find somebody it's really hard to find somebody that 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 has that same passion um and and what when it comes to when it comes to hiring a team, you want to make sure that you, you know you're finding people that are getting the job done. They're getting it done in a timely manner. And as as a company grows, these are things that come up. Are they operating ef- efficiently? You're looking at the watch. You're looking at what they're paid hourly, and you're you're saying, okay, all right, let's let's try this. Let's try that. But sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes it works out phenomenal. Like, you know, I've worked with. I've hired people that knocked my socks off when it comes to performance, completely M- mind blown. And those are people we'll keep around. Beauti- yeah, beautiful work. And then you have someone that, you know, maybe might work at their own pace. And you gotta you gotta figure that out because if, if if they're actually delivering in some way, then you know figure out how to make it work. And that's why you gotta find people that share the same passion as you. Mm -hmm. because if they don't have a passion in it, what's driving them? They're just going to get bored of the job. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Another thing that will impact growth is your actual business idea. How viable is it? Yeah, because I mean, I know for me at least, I've started, you know, plenty of different companies and, you know, I've started a couple of, I've started e-commerce companies, I've done landscaping, this and that, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, it just didn't work out. And same thing with me. I didn't didn't have... uh, I didn't have success in the beginning. I just don't talk about it. I had a, I had a handful of flops, complete flops. But that's okay. You learn from those. You learn from those. Yeah. I, I'm glad that I struggled with that because if I didn't, I would have never known that I loved what I love now. Mm-hmm. I mean, please, now I'm working and I don't feel like I'm working. Yeah. You know? So I, I, and again, no one's perfect. So when I, when I first like got in, interested in you know, starting a business, I was very narrow. The first thing I tried was very narrow and it was very one-time sale. It was very transactional. It was very, you know, it's like selling vacuum cleaners. You sell a vacuum cleaner and you move on to the next one. Well, this wasn't, this didn't have any reoccurring revenue. So when you're looking at, when you're looking at business ideas and you want to know, hey, is this set up for success? The couple things you need to consider is your market, your universe, whatever you want to call it. How many people can you sell to? What, what demographic are you selling to? What income level are you selling to? Another thing to keep in mind is when you're selling to, let's say, a higher income bracket, your market typically will get, yeah, it will get smaller. You're selling to a smaller group of people. Um, when your, your, your uh, average ticket is smaller, now you can sell to a broader market. For example, 
you know, something as simple as buying a, a bottle of detergent off the shelf at a grocery store. That's mass market. That's wide, okay? Now, if you're selling an organic, really high-end, fragrance-free, you know, specialty detergent that's sold in very, very high-end grocery stores and it's triple the price, that market gets shrunken. It's typically a higher... So what I'm trying to get at to the point, when it comes to growing your business, you want to pick a good business idea mm -hmm. that is set up for success where there is a market for it. And if you're going to sell high volume, typically you're going to be selling to the mass market. Yeah. And if you're going to be selling more smaller volume, you're selling to more of a finite group of higher income people because you're selling a higher ticket yeah. item. But that item, for example, is technically decommoditizing itself because it has no fragrance or it's super like organic See, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. When I was younger, I was always told, um, you know, I was always pushed towards passive income, passive income, build businesses with passive income. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, you know, while you were talking, I was just thinking like, <laughs> what could you do with that higher end stuff? Like, I mean, a subscription business, they have been popping up everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when you're building your business, you know, doing the same thing that everyone else is doing, you know, structure it differently. I feel like a different structure for different types of businesses that there may be a lot of saturation is extremely important as well. Like I just said, subscription businesses, like, uh, I mean, you can build a subscription with anything and they're so powerful because that not only are they passive income, but you know, they just, they, they retention's good, you know, all that sort of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another thing to keep in mind um, that's really, really important that I'll make sure we cover is asking for enough money, charging enough. Oh, for the product? For the product or service. Well, you got to know your worth. Yeah, exactly. So you always want to kind of factor in like this. Okay, by the client working with me or getting my service or my product, what do they stand to gain? And then you typically want to like ballpark in your head about a percentage, maybe, okay, what is it worth if they were to invest 10%? Okay, because you don't want to gouge, gouge them and they, they, it doesn't benefit them. You want to make sure it makes sense for them. Like, uh, for example, we've done some projects where someone, you know, the, the, biggest, the, biggest project, um, we've, the biggest project efficiency I've ever seen in the history of doing my consulting is we saw someone make an investment of under $100,000, under $100,000, and saw you know multiple millions of dollars in growth. That was the biggest, the most efficient uh, project we've ever worked on. But you know you want to work with a client or you know sell a product and make sure that the the customer is going to benefit. It's it, it it has you know it has enough benefit for them to want to pay that amount. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you, yeah. you you provide a good product or service that you can stand behind. And also you can ask for enough. Now, what is enough? Well, back to the, the markets, you get your mass market and you got your finite, you know, higher income bracket. If you're, again, if you're selling to that smaller, um, you know, more affluent, has more disposable uh, income, it's going to be a smaller amount. Um, that, that is going to impact the number of people that you need to communi communicate with. You're going, you're going to get a higher price point back from that smaller uh, group of people. But if you're going to go wider, you should, and again, if you sell to both groups, that's totally fine. If, you, if it's a product, say it's a service. Like with consulting, we yeah. have a higher end programs. Mm -hmm. We have smaller programs. Yeah. You should always diversify. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You got to diversify. You want to make sure that they, they, each of them have their own specific value to it. You know, because you don't want the, the more expensive version of your product or service to be like, like you want it, to, you want it to be kind of equal to the size for the, in this situation for, for marketing and growth, we provide, you know, a product that has done very, very well mm -hmm. for small businesses. And then they have the choice to go into the, you know, the bigger package. Yep. And then there's the biggest package and, you know, it goes on and goes on, but you want to make sure that each of them have their own value. You don't want to disregard all the smaller accounts and all the smaller, you know, uh, you know, the, the lesser, I don't, I don't want to call it lesser. You, yeah, know, what, you know what I'm trying to say? There's different size customers. Yes. And you want to make sure that you have a variety. That's yeah, yeah. just to kind of protect yourself. Because yeah. I've seen time and time again, different businesses, different industries make that mistake. Mm 
um, where they just, you know, they might only sell a high ticket item and boy, they have hills and valleys when there's some kind of like economic downturn. Mm -hmm. They, they see it, they feel it. Mm -hmm. In situations like that, you might have smaller ticket customers from a different product or a different service that you have. And then the smaller ticket cu customers are less likely to cut you. And End if they story. do, it doesn't hurt as bad as one of the. Yeah. <laughs> so you just want to diversify a little bit just to protect your business. Yeah. Um, the next thing that I think is very important to talk about when it comes to uh, growing a business is at the end of the day, make sure you have an attractive product or service. Make your product irresistible. Make the service irresistible. What does that mean? You're going to provide the highest level of value. Mm -hmm. You're going to deliver. You're going to solve a problem. You're going to fill a need. Um, you are going to fulfill a want. Uh, that's what people will pay for. In the process of setting up any business or any company or whatever you may be, if you're selling a service or a product, you want to have, you know, go through it. You know, create a business plan, pros and cons. Was this something that you would buy? Is it something that is, you know, find your demographic, that sort of stuff. Just, you know, when you're starting up a business, make sure there is potential to mm -hmm. grow. You know, exactly. make sure the pros, you know, override the cons. Absolutely. Um, you know, another thing that is very, very important when it comes to growing a business is reinvesting. Oh, yeah. No, I actually, I'm, I'm glad you brought this in because there's so many different ways to reinvest you know, your money. There's a really good book and this kind of talks about, you know, the experiences of very big CEOs, right? Mm -hmm. But you can take a lot of value from it and use it in a smaller company, a medium sized company, any business really. And it's the way you allocate your money. Yeah. It's, it's very, very important. It can make or break your company. Yeah. Invest in software that can make things run smoother, mm -hmm. uh, that can reduce the amount of man hours required. Yep. Invest in staff invest in staff that can handle more work and invest or, in your staff as well. Yeah. Invest in your staff, invest if you're in a, some type of industrial business and you know, you need a piece of equipment or machinery that will allow you to produce, you know, 30, 40% more invest in that product, invest in that machinery because it's ultimately, it's going to set you up for success. You never want to hoard your cash and mm -hmm. not put yourself in a position to grow. It's almost like, you know, you look at a pipe, that's, you know, two inches wide and you have, you know, a 500 gallon drum of water trying to push through that pipe, your business can handle just so much. Now, if you invest in a wider pipe, you have more capacity, then your business just naturally can handle more and you'll grow. Yeah. That's the key to growth is you have to ena enable the business that you've built to be able to grow by allowing it to have more capacity. You know, yeah. that's something that I've seen business owners that they, you know, sometimes they're like, well, you know, I, I don't, I want to stay small. Yes, there are benefit, benefits to being small and small. The definition of small is, 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 is relative. It's based on a few different things. It's, you know, based on someone's opinion. Some people want a staff of 20. Some people want a staff of one. But no matter what, at the early stages of any business or any company, it's going to be tough, but you have to reinvest your money. You're the only way that you're going to grow. And especially if you want that financial freedom, you have to invest your money 80% back into the company, 20% back into your pockets. Mm. You know, it, that that's, you know, the percentages change all the time, yeah, but it, everybody's formula is different. It's always different, but at the early stages, you have to reinvest in your company. Like, like, you know, that time we were meeting with a prospective uh, client and they were talking about, yeah, they were bragging that they only spend 4% on advertising. And our next, this was crazy. Uh, you'll, you'll know who I'm talking about. We were like, yeah, so how long you been? You know, he would say he was doing like $1.2 million or whatever. And we were like, oh, how long you been at that? You guys ready for this? 30 years. He was doing $1.2 million for 30 years, three zero. No growth at all. Minimal growth. Um, he was like, yeah. And he kicked back in his chair like, you know, he was a, big shot. And he's like, yeah, I only spend 4% on advertising. And we were like, okay, that's your problem, dude. Like, that's why you're not growing is you're only put in 4%. Like now imagine if you spent 10 to 20% at that stage, 30 years in, you know, yeah. at that stage, you spent, you spend 10 to 20% in your company. You're looking at numbers like six, seven, four, you know? Yeah. It's basic math. Unless you have a horrible product or service, you know, you want to, you know, you should be investing into the growth 
not just into staff and into your staff and, and equipment and software, but invest in the growth of your business straight up. That was the first thing we started with. And that's probably what we'll end with is advertising yeah. to kind of sum up this whole entire episode. Mm -hmm. The first and foremost thing is advertising, getting your name out there. In today's age, advertising and all these social platforms, it's the most powerful tool that people sometimes don't know how to take advantage of. That and content. I'm yeah. going to throw it out there. Yeah. The more content you have consistently, listen, you can be any business mm -hmm. and you post something one a day, but you post that one thing a day on every single platform and then you do different like organic strategies. You know, we'll talk about that down the line. We'll maybe throw in a couple little strategies that we've, you know, probably gotten paid a lot for before but you know you got to take advantage of those mm -hmm. so just to kind of wrap up today's episode yeah. you know if you if you want to share leave in the comments you know what part of your business do you want to grow is it sales is it attention do you want more eyeballs on your business you know maybe you leave a comment about something you've tried and we'll try to reply back and kind of give you some insight on uh what we think yeah yeah 100 percent as always, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Like, subscribe, turn on those notifications, show us your support. We love it. Please comment anything, you know, engage in what we're doing because, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for what we have and what we're going to grow. Awesome. Thank you for watching, guys.